Okay, we are moving through the Gospel of Mark. Two more chapters, and we are done with Mark. Chapter 15 of Mark. And there is so much here that, oh, we're going to try our best. Very early in the morning. <clears throat> what morning? The morning after Jesus is in these religious trials with these religious leaders, with the Sanhedrin, with the Pharisees, with the synagogue leaders. They've kept him up all night long. They spit on him. They blindfolded him. They hit him. They called him names. They tried to find false witnesses. He's up all night long. You can't do that. It's illegal. And it's not very, it's not very nice for religious leaders to do those kinds of things. <laughs> you think? Oh my word. You know, religion is, is such a folly and trying to hold on to, what are they trying to hold on to? What, it, what is this? Well, very early in the morning, the chief priests, the elders, the teachers of the law, the Bible teachers, the Sunday school teachers, the whole Sanhedrin, all of them, the community leaders, all of the community leaders, getting together to get rid of Jesus. They made their plans together. Wow. Um, so they bound Jesus, tie, tie him up. Well, why do you need to tie Jesus up? You don't need to put handcuffs on Jesus. And they led him away and they handed him over to Pilate. Well, Pilate says, are you the king of the Jews? Because if Jesus would have been a king, then Rome doesn't want any rival kings. They're going to execute rival kings. So the charge is that Jesus is claiming to be the king of the Jews. So now we have a rival king. So let's execute him. Well, we can't execute him because we're just religious leaders. We're just community leaders. We're just, you know, part of the Chamber of Commerce. You know, the Chamber of Commerce can't kill people. Um, so we're going to bring him to the governor. And we're going to ask the governor if he will kill him for us. That would really make a good relationship between the religious community and the business community, don't you think? These guys. <clears throat> and so uh, Jesus said, yes, you've, uh, you've said so. You've said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, are you going to answer you know, these guys are bringing me here. They want me to kill you, and you're not answering. Well, the scripture said, as a sheep before a shear is a silent, so Jesus would be before his accusers. Jesus isn't going to answer these accusers. It doesn't matter how he answers. They're going, they've already decided they're going to kill him. See how many things are accusing him? But Jesus made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. He was amazed. Now, it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man named Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists. The insurrectionists are people that are trying to overthrow Rome by violence. And so they're there in prison with him. Now, Rome would kill those people. Rome doesn't want uh, these people running around that are trying to overthrow Rome by violence. And so they would be crucified. They, they would be put to death. And Pilate would put them to death. And a man named Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. So the uprising being, you know, rebellion against Rome and people were killed, maybe soldiers. We don't know exactly who was killed, but people were killed. And the crowd came up and asked Pilate to do them what he usually did. What did he usually do? He usually released a political prisoner as a gesture of goodwill. Yeah, a lot of times leaders will do this, particularly despots and dictators will do things of goodwill, you know, show that, you know, we're good guys. We're going to release the poets we're going to release the dissidents. We're going to release those who spoke against us because we're good guys and we're not threatened by them. And, and it really is a way to just kind of try to get along with the people when the people are trying to rebel against you. So Pilate said, okay, so um, what do you want to do this year? Uh, who do you want me to release to you? Do you want me to release Jesus, the King of the Jews? Knowing that it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over Pilate knew it, was, it wasn't, there's no, nothing legitimate here. There's just a jealousy of the chief priests. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. And, Bar and, and Pilate said, well, what am I going to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? What am I going to do with Jesus, the king of the Jews? And they said, crucify him. And they said, why? Now, Pilate's standing up for Jesus. Jesus won't stand up for himself, but yet Pilate is standing up for Jesus. He saw that he was innocent. You see, the innocent one is going to die for the guilty. 
Why? What crime has he committed? But they, they shouted all the louder, crucify him. And wanting to satisfy the crowd, this was what he would do. He would, they would always hand over the prisoner during the Passover when there's these hundreds of thousands of people there. And they show, you know, we're good guys. We're Rome. We, you know, we don't want to crush you guys. We give you, you, we give you your, your political guys. We'll give you the dissidents. You know, take them here. Well, wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. And he had Jesus flogged. And he handed him over to be crucified. Wow. So there's a doctrine, Christian doctrine, called the substitutionary death. And the idea of the substitutionary death is that you are worthy of death for your sin. Now, in the Old Testament, you could bring a sheep or you could bring, you know, some innocent animal. And you would bring the innocent animal to the priest and that innocent animal would be slain for your sins and the priest would pronounce you forgiven and clean. Because the innocent animal took your place. The innocent one took the place of the guilty. Barabbas is the first one that goes free because of the death of Jesus. He's the first one to experience the substitutionary death of Jesus. It's because of Jesus' death that Barabbas goes free. And it's because of Jesus' death that you and I go free. Amazing picture, Barabbas. Verse 16, the soldiers led Jesus into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of the soldiers. Hey, let's get together, guys. You know, Jesus is here, the king of the Jews. And they mock him. They put a purple robe on him, and they twisted a crown of thorns and set it on him. I have a crown of thorns here somewhere. Here it is. Um, look at this thing. You know, I, 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 I found that actually some years ago in the Garden of Gethsemane growing near a garbage can. You imagine having that thing pressed into your head? Man. Ah, awful. And they began to call him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again, they struck him on the head and they hit him with a staff and they spit on him and they fell on their knees and they paid homage. Hey, King of the Jews. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him and then they led him out to crucify him. After they had played with him enough, tortured him enough, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, now this might be the Rufus that's in Romans 16, was passing by on his way from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. Golgotha, Calvary, the place of the skull. Because in that particular place, the, on the little hillside, it looks like there's a skull there in, in the hillside. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. And they crucified him, and they divided up his clothes, and they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. And the, the notice was written against him that said, King of the Jews. And they crucified two rebels on each side of him. He was, he was crucified with the guilty, but also with the rich because he goes into the rich man's tomb. Crucified with two rebels with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, said, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come on down from the cross, save yourself. The same way the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked them among themselves. He, hey, hey, he saved others. He can't save himself, though. Look at him up there. <laughs> uh, we got him. Uh, this is the end of that. Uh, let, let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross. Then we'll believe. And those who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Well, well, at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three. That's why on Good Friday, a lot of times, the tradition of churches is to have services from noontime to three. It used to be some decades ago that businesses would shut down, uh, shut down on Good Friday and um, they would have Good Friday services in churches. They would be mobbed. They'd be packed from 12 to 3. They would do the seven last words of Jesus. And at 3 in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, um, uh, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabachthi, uh, which means, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because God's not going to look at sin. Jesus is carrying sin now. And so some standing by said, you know, that might be Elijah. Verse 42 it was a preparation day, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council. Now this guy breaks rank. I like him. You know, he was there in the Sanhedrin. He's there with all these guys that, you know, said, you know, crucify him and all this. And Joseph of Arimathea is enough is enough. You know, you guys are, you guys are crazy. He breaks rank. He was a prominent member of the council and he himself had been waiting for the kingdom. He went boldly to Pilate, so he has connections. He has 
political connections, and he asked Pilate for the body. Pilate was surprised to hear he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked if Jesus already died. And when he learned from the centurion he was, he gave the body to Joseph. Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, he wrapped it in linen, and he put it in a tomb made out of rock, his own tomb, his family tomb. He rolled the stone against the entrance. Mary Magdalene and the, the mother of Joseph were there. All the guys have abandoned him. The women are there. They said to Joseph, do you want to give the family tomb to this guy? He said, it's just for the weekend. Hey, we'll move on. Mark 16, last chapter. Bless you guys. Love you.